Hello everyone, welcome to another video. I'm going to try to do a little repair cafe to this uh, microwave. It's a Sogo as you can see, but all microwaves are pretty much similar inside or very close together. It has two rotary things that are, instead of some uh, uh, dials. And uh, when you open the door, it has these uh, holes here that probably uh, touch some controllers. Uh, you can see there the emitter for the microwave things and there's a light up there that also opens and closes. Uh, what's wrong with this particular microwave is that when uh, you start it up, it powers properly, uh, it starts uh, rotating, uh, the light is on, it does some noise, but then you hear a click when it's supposed to turn the hum on uh, for the emitter of the microwaves to actually start and sometimes it hums and sometimes it doesn't and uh, according to the internet that's pretty common so um so yeah i was trying to or i'm going to uh, try to take a look inside and uh, see if we can try to fix it or if i should steer close and you know send it to the proper authorities to deal with anyways uh first thing that you should do unplug it always unplug it um, then you need to get rid of some screws from the lid. This one, that one over there, and uh, this one here, that one over there, and also some here down there. Uh, after this, it uh, tilts up, and then you can pull it off. And to reassign it, it's the same thing the other way. You slot it in from the diagonal, and then you uh, turn these two sides inside they need to uh, be um, well fitted both in the sides and on the top so you need to be careful with that but they should fit fine so anyways let's open this up and see if we can fix this microwave today or not so this is the inside of the microwave for the repair cafe i'm gonna point a few of the items out i don't think i will be able to do the repair cafe and i will I explain to you why. So the main thing that you need to be careful when opening a microwave is uh, these things. Um, the both of them, they have a high voltage, so they need to be discharged properly. They are uh, capacitators, I think it's called. Uh, I think the main one is this one, and this is just to dissipate things. But I could be wrong. I'm not an electrical engineer. You can see this one is grounded already. The black thing touches uh, the lid down there. So that's good. And I heard from the internet that they're supposed to isolate themselves. So normally, unless they malfunction, you shouldn't get zapped. But anyways, you read what it says there. Don't touch without discharging. So yeah, uh, always follow those rules. Um, there's a little circuit board here. Not quite sure what it does, but uh, I do see the fuse there. It's the fuse if you overload something, there's something wrong on the system, that this will blow up instead of uh, destroying the whole system. And uh, it's grounded there, which is good, and it goes out. Uh, this is the main um, emitter for the, the microwaves themselves. And uh, you can see there some uh, switches, which when I open the door, yeah, and there you saw that little one over there. It clicks in and clicks out. There are two of them, one up here that gets switched in and switched out and another one down here which also gets switched in and switched out. So the circuit only gets activated when the door is closed. This is for safety reasons properly. Uh, this is the panel for control. As you can see here in the front has two knobs, did stuff inside, a few cog wheels that you can see there. Turn the different levels on and off. Uh, the bell that does the ding when it's ready and a few connectors that go out uh, probably all the way to the board and the stuff and turn things on and off so what i think is wrong with this microwave is that there's probably a part down here or maybe it's one of these two thingies that um has a loose soldering tip or connector somehow and sometimes it gives signal and it turns on the emitter. Sometimes it does not. So yeah, not sure. Uh, anyways, I don't have a, um, what's called a ceramic resistor thing to uncharge this properly. So I can't remove this piece 
without that, without being 100% sure, so this will probably be a, a dud repair cafe. But if anyone has any ideas on what, uh, if, so, if I missed something, because I'm not an electrical engineer, did I miss something obvious, like, oh, it's just this thing that you need to wiggle a little bit. Uh, well, yeah, then uh, let me know. Otherwise, I'm also not sure how to remove this. I tried to pull them off a little bit, but they were quite hard to pull. I'm not sure if there's like a trick to it or something. But, yeah. Anyways, that's all I have for today, so see you next time. Bye-bye, everyone. Take care.